a little uh, fun this evening. As different from other evening. <laughs> and uh, raise a curious question, which uh, we touch on every once in a while, and that is uh, how important, if at all, is the introduction to these Platonic dialogues? Well, I had a talk with Barbara. <laughs> And Barbara, I'm telling you, did some good work on that. And so I invited her tonight, of course, to give a share with us what she found so that we can explore it. Because it deals with a lot of very interesting questions once we get it out. So what do you say? Give her a chance to Absolutely. jump in? I think so. Okay, so the first if you need it. Oh, thank you. Right, how you know? Thanks. Okay, um, so what this is, um, is an exploration, you might say, of the dramatic setting uh, of the opening lines of the Lysis. So I had done it uh, when we, the week we first began. And I talked with Pierre about some things I discovered using the Liddell Scott lexicon, right, to, to for some terminology. But then last night, I or this morning, this evening, I'll get it, I'll get there. I went to a website called theoi.com, which has an incredible treasury of um, um, images of the gods and all of the passages describing the function of the gods and the names put to the gods and the festivals, incredible artwork. So that's a one resource I was using. And then I started using an old friend of, of many of us here, which is uh, Perseus, which is a, a program out of, I think, Tufts University. So I think it's Perseus at Tufts EDU. But if you uh, choose dot tufts. dot tufts, thank you, dot tufts edu, and so that enables you to uh, look up, for example, the term I wanted to know in the in the um, introduction, which was Lyceum, because um, if you open your text, you'll see that Socrates says, "I was making my way from the academy straight to the Lyceum by the road outside the town wall." <laughs> now. Pierre has said about the introductions to Platonic dialogues that in them they are a model for the dynamics, I believe, of the whole dialogue. And that the last <laughs> conclusion of the dialogue usually raises the whole dialogue to a higher, a higher level, gives it a twist and brings it to a higher level. So I'm always interested in those two parts uh, in particular. So I'm going to uh, give you some interesting things I found. Um, <clears throat> and uh, see if I can get you to play a little bit in that way. So, <clears throat> first of all, did you notice how, where is Socrates going from and where is he going to? Right? According to that line, let me read it again for you. I was making my way from the academy straight to the Lyceum mm -hmm. by the road outside the town wall, just under the wall. Right? So, right, we're talking Athens here, then how is he proceeding? He's going, right, so I pictured in my mind, just for the sake of argument, a wall, right? And then he's going from the academy, right? He's going outside the wall to the Lyceum, right? That's, that's where he's going. So, in the Lyceum is a gymnasium. It's described variously as a gymnasium, and as a uh, grove, and it's uh, lo lo so supposedly located next to a temple dedicated to Apollo. Okay? So what's really interesting about this, um, then, so you want to know as much as you can about um, the Lyceum and uh, about uh, Apollo, of course. So... 
Perseus lets you search Lyceum and um, gives you quotes from the earliest to the most recent. So they give you quotes out of um, Epictetus, out of um, Pausanias, and um, both in the history and, in, and out of Aristotle, for example. So it's kind of cool because all I have to do is find my notes. <laughs> Flip it over, then it becomes a different study on the other side. And uh, for those of you who enjoy, let me see if I can, where are you? That would be fun to do it by memory. I think I have most of it, but. Mm -hmm. Hmm. One more time. Okay. Okay, so the word, um, let's just talk about the word uh, lyce lyceum. So this word is, in the Greek, it looks like this. <clears throat> and variously, it can mean, they, they think it either comes from a city name, or which is derived from an app, uh, a name for Apollo, or it comes from a word for light. And that's where it becomes interesting. Um, because it, and it can also come from a word for wolf, which is another appellation for Apollo. So, Apollo, um, so as, as light, it's an interesting kind of light because it comes in a compound with phos, which most of us know in terms like photo, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so it comes in uh, that compound, but when it comes in there, you can distinguish what kind of light it is and it turns out it is the kind of light that is either at dawn or dusk. So it's what you might call transition light, if we can give it that name. So that's kind of an interesting thing then, right? So Socrates is on his way to this uh, Lucaeon, which might be, we could say, a place of light or a place of darkness. Now you're going to have to, yeah. So, so was the Coming inside the wall? Inside mm -hmm. the city or outside? Outside. That's you can tell by my handy drawing. No. <laughs> this being the wall. Oh, oh, that's that's the reason you couldn't see that. Okay. So, um, uh, okay, so what's interesting, I, I guess I'll give you a little bit more about the Lyceum, which is, apparently, um, there is a grove, which, as many people know, groves um, are also sometimes divine and sacred groves, and some of the passages tend to suggest that that was the kind of grove that they're talking about where the Lyceum is. It's a sacred grove. And that there's a walkway around the Lyceum that is called a peripatos, which this is not in the dialogue directly, but I think it plays a role in understanding, which peripatos is where we get the word peripatetic as a description of philosophers, people who walk and talk. Right? So, because um, peri meaning around, and I think patos comes from some form of walk or foot. So, anyway, um, so the Lyceum, even though it's a gymnasium and they do such things as martial arts inside, spear throwing, at least that's what they said they come from there. I don't know, inside if it has spear throwing, but in any case, some of the passages said they came from the Lyceum with their spear and their buckler. And uh, wrestling, nude wrestling, and but outside, this place appears in several dialogues: the Euthydemus, and Phaedrus. the Phaedrus, and as the place where um, uh, Socrates habitually goes and and to talk, right? Yeah. You got those from that source. That yes, Perseus Tufts. It's very cool oh, yeah. because if you know any Greek at all, they have it in the English. You can expand upon it. You can pull up the whole context in English, wow. and then you can like flip over to the Greek and go, oh, and what is the word being used there? And you can like look at the Greek. So it's very swell. Okay, so okay, so. So you, you you then know that this could either be right associated with light and therefore perhaps with daybreak, right? right? So 
light is a very nice metaphysical image for, for us who understand it as being related to the idea of the good, radiant light of being, right? So, it be, and, and Socrates is described, so I guess what I thought, found interesting was this. He leaves the academy, he proceeds, oh, that's what I need to give you. Ah! Okay. Um, Luco, Lucobas, as a, an adjective, there's a word um, which kind of means the step of the light, can mean the path of light, like the path the light travels. Right, so it's interesting that while this is not that term, closely associated to it is the path of light that would be a, an Apollonian path, you know, the path of the sun through the sky, right? So that's kind of interesting. So the Lucaeon is a gymnasium, and then it includes philosophical discord as part of its habit. Like one of the quotes was very interesting because it said that the pillars of the Lyceum agreed with the um, agree, agreed with uh, or applauded this discourse that went on, and this was and Socrates was saying, "Look, this has come out of you. It's such an early stage. This wonderful dialogue. I'm I'm not sure, even sure I can approach it." Very similar dynamic to what he does in the dialogue we're reading here, what, only when he's talking about the friendship that the two boys have, right, or the two people have. So, and that is at 303C in the Euthydemus, where that same, similar dynamic happens. So, wouldn't it be interesting if there is a um, symbolic level at which Socrates is then, um, do we want to say, taking a path of light or producing a path of light? So, um, and then what happens is he gets to this place it says, I reach the little gate that leads to the spring of Panops, right? So I'm not sure how to understand that, and I didn't have a chance to research it. But let's say, and he doesn't get this far, he stops here, right? And let's call this the gate of Panops. I'm not sure if it's in the wall or not, but this gate leads to a spring of Panops, and Panops means all-seeing, right? Ops meaning optic. So, um, and you can see that... That's an epithet of Hermes, right? Who is the god of, um, who's the messenger god, god of communication, I always consider him, or dialogue it could be in this case. So at that point, stop me if I go too fast. <laughs> I have a tendency to talk fast when I'm nervous. At that point, he runs into um, Hippothales and Stesippus and some other youths, right? So here he runs into these people over here. Right, and, and, <clears throat> and it says, they're standing in a group together, and Hippothales, then Hippothales, as he saw me approaching, said, Socrates, whither away and whence? From the academy, I replied, on my way straight to the Lyceum. Now, the word straight can mean, in a sense, directly, right? Mm -hmm. And so what's really interesting is, um, Hippothales says, come over here, straight to us. He uses the same terminology. In other words, give up your goal, come with, uh, come with us, right? So, um, he says, you will not put in here, but you may as well. Where do you mean, and what is your company, Socrates asks. Here, he said, showing me there just opposite the wall, right? So, in some ways, opposite here is a sort of enclosure, right? But we don't yet know, at least I don't know, the relationship between... Um, the enclosure and the gate. Um, it says, a sort of enclosure and a door standing open. So, right? What was the relationship? It says, opposite the wall. But I don't know the relationship between, th this is at the spring, at the gate to the spring is where these youths were standing. And then it says that it's opposite the wall is where this enclosure is. So, so he says, we pass our time there, and not only we ourselves, but others besides a great many and handsome or beautiful. So a great many youths are here. They pass their time there. Pass their time is a word used in Greek also for what these people are, what Socrates does here. That's also called the diatribos, which means a way of wearing away of time, 
Okay? So far, so good? Wait, no, Socrates does that. Socrates, that similar terminology is used of any habitual activity, but basically right. we use the word pastime. Right. Well, and the Greek term is like a wearing away um, uh, of time in a similar sense. What do you make of that? Oh well, what 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 would one obviously make of the? No, of no, the, no, no, I'm asking you. I, oh, I would make of the fact. Well, I'm, I want to give you a couple more things. Okay. You see, because this is a wrestling school. This is a palaestra. So there's wrestling going on here. There's wrestling going on here, and this is a palaestra or resting place, uh, wrestling place. So it's a similar to, but it's recent construction. It doesn't have the heritage of the sacred grove, right, the peripatetic philosophy going on habitually here, a group of people who evaluate the talks going on here. It doesn't have that. It's a recent construction, and it has a lot of beautiful young men, and it says, our, our pastime chiefly consists of discussions in which we should be happy to let you have a share, right? So, again, you have logos here, you have philosophical discussions here, and you have logos here. So can you see there's a whole series of parallels between the two places? Socrates is on his way straight here. They want him to go straight there. <coughs> there are similar similarities between the two places. Yeah? So then how would you compare the academy to both of those places since well, that was his origin? Since what? Since that was Socrates' origin. He was walking from the academy. Well, Raphael, what do you know about the academy? Um, actually, admittedly, not a whole lot. Except you know that um, Plato was a teacher there and other things. That's about it. Well, I mean, it must be kind of a shoddy joint then. Would that, would that be the way you'd go with it? <laughs> no, I don't know. And I would, put, I would put that as a place of, you know, I don't know what to do with that question. So not knowing, does anybody else want to field it? Okay. So... So he says, um, who, who does the teaching in there, right? In this, so there's a teacher in here, and he says that teacher is your own comrade, which is um, a different word than the word we're going to explore, philos. It's a word, I think it's hetairos, right? last time I looked. Yeah. So it's another word for companion, but of a completely different etymology than the word philos, which is the word of the dialogue for friend and love. Okay? So... Um, so your own friend, how does he call him? Mikas? Mm -hmm. Your own friend and supporter, Mikas, is the teacher. So um, it seems to me that this, this setup, would, would, would it not um, permit of a great many uh, inquiries as to um, what is the likeness? Is there a likeness? What is the likeness? Is there one greater and one less? If so... How would you demonstrate one is greater and one is less, right? So, and what is, what is, the, what is the import of the fact that Socrates turns off and engages in discussion here, right? Don't you think those are, it's kind of interesting? So, let me see if I have anything else to talk to you. Hmm. Yeah, Mikas is described as a sufficient sophist, right, mm -hmm. in the dialogue. <laughs> so, which of course is a word Socrates sometimes seems to be giving some weight to, right? Um, okay, so your question, um, did, can you see that in a sense I answered it? I think that it, it allows us to set up um, to, to uh, explore what the nature is of the dialogue that takes place at this place and um, the question of likenesses. Mm, you know, Pierre last week was talking about who grows in the dialogue. Right. Well, and, you know, so you'd have to look at the way the dialogue concludes in terms of how it begins, I think. But I... I right. Well, like, bristling is something you can pass your time with, rub some time away with. Uh-huh. And then there's like verbal wrestling, 
that people can get involved in and burn some of that time away too, right? So I thought it might be a good question to ask. Well, yeah, well, I think we, the nature of the place. I think we mentioned that in both places they're 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 talking about logos that they pass their time in discussions as and well here, logos, yeah. and discussions as well here, yeah. and. Um, you raised the question or the suggestion of the Phaedrus, and that's a dialogue about lovers, you know, engaging in dialogue. And um, Socrates has several such. There's a lot in that, though, right? Passing your time away. Right? Well, you could just be, you know, playing hopscotch or something. Okay, so I just wanted to bring out some. Oh, Lucis, by the way. Um, lysis. The word, the word lysis is a very interesting term because it, it appears to come, uh, names are difficult sometimes, but the, the name lysis is a, a term that can mean um, a, a, a degree of, it can mean a loosening, a setting free, a release. So if you look at um, his as a character and, you, and if you can find evidence of growth, then there, growth, excuse me, growth, then there might be a reason why he, he has that name of setting free to the degree that he's set free of his position in the dialogue, which would enable him to get some growth. Is there any relationship to Lyceum with his name? Uh, no, not... You can see this. We pronounce it Lyceum, but it's yeah. actually Luke. Luke yeah. yeah, and this is Luce. Yeah. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. Just a comment that it's also curious that the dialogue takes on his name because it points to the idea that the dialogue as a whole can, if you understand it, bring about liberation. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, or, you know... Whatever degrees of it. That's right. Whatever degree you understand. That's right. Yeah, I think... Good good, good point, yeah. Did, did you guys talk about the word chanced in that first sentence? I chanced there upon Hippothales. Who's the we guys? Well, because I missed the first week that you guys studied this dialogue, but I remember that when we... We have used worked on that term before. That word sunetu sunetu san sunetu khan yeah sunetu khan yeah it comes from the word to do with the gods. Well, tuke is chance, and it can be either good chance or bad chance. But it sounds like it's like you're meeting up with a chance. You know what I mean? But is it? But it does it. My understanding of it was that it has something to do with something that you get from the gods. That when when you have that kind of encounter, that it, that you're that you're around the divine, is that what, what's the lovely? I don't know that. She's talking about the actual like a thir what eighth line of the dialogue. So opening par paragraph, fourth line. Mm -hmm. So, and the last thing I'll say, which is kind of interesting, and some of you people who at like the little, visions, at the little gate, I was, tr you know, Pierre says you, that a good way to perceive, and I found it so myself, is to try to visualize it like a movie, right? Mm. So there I was, visualizing away, and suddenly it was like I popped into what seemed like a, another realm, like I've done some Tibetan visualization, and the same thing happened, where suddenly I'm in a realm of, where the, the Buddha that I'm visualizing is absolutely real, and there's dimensionality, and so there I am, suddenly, I'm outside the wall, and I'm seeing the Socrates and the spring and the people, so I recommend that part. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, Barbara. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Were you going mm -hmm. to expound on the homework assignment? I thought. Oh, no. I left that for you. Oh, <laughs> I'm not ready to do that. So, but I thought that's what you wrote. Thank you so much. No. Thanks, Barbara. Thank sure, you're welcome. Thank you. I hope you found it illuminating. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Did you like oh, it? Yeah. Cool. A lot. Because it seems to me like I didn't go as... No. <clears throat> Barbara always does this. <laughs> well, <laughs> She sits down, she sits down at the right time, <laughs> but you didn't finish. I didn't? No. I thought I did. I really you was making remember it. Remember what you, finished. aren't you going to share with us what you think the significance of this is? Well, I did share that I thought that the light in, the, in question was the, the idea of the good, you know, the radiant light of being. I, I didn't write it on the board, though. That's what the light you mean? No, no. If, if Socrates is in a state of mind, let us even hypothesize for a moment that he's like a sun traveling on a path. Oh. Sun, yes. <laughs> you know? So he's proceeding to... Yeah, like Apollo or like Helios in the chariot. 
that's one hypothesis. Or is he simply going to the place of daybreak? Is he going to the Lyceum because he wants to achieve a state? You know, or is he going to... I don't know. That's the question. You know, there's several possibilities. I, you're going so fast. <laughs> <laughs> as you were saying, as Socrates is to... Oh, it could be to the sun. Oh, yeah, or to Apollo. Yeah. To Apollo. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so he would. So the radiant light of being is to the sun. See, should it be higher? Should the radiant light of being to the good? Like, what's in the analogical relationship? Anybody can jump in here. Mm -hmm. Don't let me hog it, okay? I mean, just, you so know, just jump in. Okay. <laughs> well, because he's bringing, he's bringing Sorry. something. No, right no, no, you, you were just beginning to speculate, right. so why should we come in and interrupt yeah. it? Yours. Yes, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, well, I, I, first I was thinking then, Apollo is known as the god of the sun, mm -hmm. and what we mean by that is the... Um, earthly sun. So does that put Socrates in a higher metaphysical plane than Apollo? Or is he like a parallel <coughs> figure? See, that was one way. You know, or... What, what figure? What was that? <coughs> metaphysical. He's on a higher metaphysical plane. Because his, his sun is not a physical sun, but a metaphysical state of um, encountering reality. Socrates, is that is. <coughs> or when we say radiant light of being, is that because there is a source of the light? With, that is higher, so would it be that as, uh, as Socrates is to Apollo, so the so to uh, the radiant light of being is to the good itself? Hmm. Um, remember you were going to then relate it to this material you put yeah, on the board? That's, well, see, that, I had a lot of questions about that that I tried to put out while I was talking about it, which is... The um, academy is where they draw people to poker no, in. No, the academy should be the higher place, shouldn't it? Well, I, I listen. It seems like it should be. No, no, but no. But then is he going to a lower place? No. Mm. Or is he just Stay. going to a terminus? I don't. You, you <laughs> play. You play. You're yeah, doing yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Plato's Academy? Yes. <laughs> so is he taking what he learned in the Academy and flashing someone with it? <laughs> so to speak. Apollo. Streaking through. Apollo is the son of Zeus. So as Apollo is the son of Zeus. Yeah. And the brilliant light of being is the is that which comes from the good, right? Apollo comes from the adversary. So Socrates then journeys from mm -hmm. Plato's Academy to mm -hmm. the Lyceum. Uh huh. He then breaks off and goes here. Yes. Uh huh. Mm. And you were going to make a point about the wall, were you not? Mm. That you did it, did it so beautifully. Well, just that there was a gate there that, yeah. that is a gate uh, called the Gate of Panops, right? Or the Spring, the Spring of Panops, spring. which is spring. Uh, and Panops is all seeing, right? All seeing. Seeing. Yeah. Oh, would that be important? That would be very important. Oh, yeah, okay. The gate of all sin. So, uh, so as he leaves to the Lyceum, he um, is directed to go through. The gate of all sin. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yes. <clears throat> all right. To a place of of logos and and beauty. Uh, by the way, did you say this was a, a certain kind of teaching going on here? Right. So what was sophistry. It? What? Sophistry. No, no. Oh, what did you call uh, it before? In discussion, logos. 
Oh. oh. And um, oh. they pass their time in di in logos and in oh. wrestling. Oh. Then it uh, competes. It competes. Oh. oh uh, with both, I think. Doesn't for it? both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it competes, what competes? Ah. Hmm. and it's something new. The little, hmm. the little hmm. uh, hippothales uh, wrestling enclosure. It competes. Yeah. Yeah. How does it compete? What does that mean? It's doing the same thing, sweetie. I'm not following. What competes? Well, did we just we just drew the we just made the point that it, they have the logos there, hmm. right? And so they also have wrestling there. And the academy is a, is a place in which they have philosophical instruction. So the, also the, logos. The police, that's what I was wondering. What was the reference? What was the pronoun it referring to? The, the, the palaestra itself? Yeah, the palaestra. Hippothelius palaestra. As opposed to... Just, yeah. I, don't, I don't mean to be sure. Uh, yeah, I, I'm very interested in this idea of competition. It gets back to the question that I had earlier about spend, what, what do you spend your time doing? Mm -hmm. Right, and now it's been raised that there's a competition that happens. <coughs> that to me seems a development, but still not enough, not satisfactory as far as answering the idea of competition. And spending your time... Is it, is it more competing or imitating? Looks like competing. Um, and did you not make a point about twilight? Yes, there was dusk or, or dawn. Dusk. Yeah. So this is a new center that's competing with them both, uh -huh. position between the two, uh -huh. and they're inviting him to, to come go in. directly to their place instead of directly to the. In order to uh, engage him in dialogue and discussion, right? Oh. And maybe the, he's supposed to. This man is supposed to be his comrade and supporter. Uh, Mikas is supposed to be a supporter. Not good enough. Yeah. Another term we need. Rival? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, we have this, don't we? Possible. And we're saying the middle one is twilight. Hmm. You also called it sophists. Sophists, yes. Oh, okay. Well, and that's what they say in the dialogue, Sophie stays. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, they're inviting him in in order to finish it. Probably to, to engage him and maybe to... They trap him. Distraction. <laughs> yeah. Did they trap him? I think they did, yeah. Maybe they want him to compete. So they saw him coming Wrestle. down, they pulled him in here. Yep. He wasn't he was going cold. here. Nope. Uh, he wouldn't, didn't, wouldn't, shouldn't, whatever you want to call it. Uh -huh. well, uh -huh. Right? I see, I see. So his goal was to go straight <coughs> here, mm -hmm. and they got him, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They got him to go to the twilight zone. <laughs> what's, what's the word that I mean, just keeping the time, twilight? just that's just because she mentioned it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, um, I was saying that Lucos, as opposed to Fos, oh. seems to mean either day, daybreak or dusk. Okay, Lucos. Pierre? And if this is a center for dialogue, how are they doing, by the way, as you finish the dialogue? Can you give them a grade? Oh, uh, as who said, as, I didn't give them a grade yet. I haven't done my homework of that, of oh, that kind. Oh, oh. I can't give a grade till I do the homework. Can I? I thought we were going to do the whole chart to see who... Yeah, but I thought maybe you would tell us how much Socrates learned from being in their company. Oh, I would say a good nothing. What? <laughs> uh, uh, nothing. Let's hear that. Well, then what did he do? I think he he showed the value of the lessons they were receiving, which was Zippo. <laughs> which was Zippo. Right? Ah. So a rival school between the two, hmm. right, draws him into it. Hmm. To get him... Does he mention the fact that... Uh, 
the leading thinker happens to be a colleague of his, or was, and he's somewhat reluctant, or shows a high degree of respect for him, or anticipation of greatness. <laughs> oh, no, 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 in the words, in the text. Yes, they said mm -hmm. a very competent sophist. Yeah. Sufficient is what it is. Sufficiently Sufficient great. Sufficient yeah. is good. Mm. Yeah, but he's got his tongue in his cheek, right? <laughs> Hard to tell. Umar <laughs> um, said he had his tongue in cheek when he said that. Oh, I just made comments. Uh, that's you can always see that in the text. Tongue yeah, in cheek. Yeah, great. The page is always that pushed out on the side. Little luck. Yeah, yeah. That's papyrus. So. <laughs> you know, I've been to one of these modern universities, so they got ideas in my head like uh, Socratic irony and stuff. And so I wondered. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Another rival school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a Dharma combat between different schools. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they want him, and they set it up. I see, I see. So another I see. knockdown, drag out, <coughs> showdown. Mm -mm. Um, this is where they have one key word, you know, they're using professor in the Loeb edition, and if you look at the other two translations I have, they use the word sophist. Oh, Most yeah, compet yeah. competent sophist. You just catch it up, Bill. And the other one is uh, sufficiently great sophist. <laughs> this is the two. We can Very use different, it. We can different use it. Yeah. By the way, has this image of the walls, did that ever play a role in any other dialogue? Parmenides. Phaedrus. 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 I think Phaedrus, and I'm Phaedrus. saying also there's the ceramicus, the wall. Oh, oh, oh. Did Socrates go down to the Piraeus? Mm -hmm. Yes, and that means going on outside. Oh. What does it mean then to be outside of the walls? Proceeding? Unprotected? In Pro Proclus' terms? Sure. Un unprotected? I don't know. That's why I asked. I was saying it could be a motion like Proclus has a proceeding from the uh, source. Hmm. <clears throat> to be with the multitude. Well, when he went down to the Piraeus, it was like a trip down into the realm of opinion with his buddy who was going to point out some, or, you know, a, a trip down into the cave, wasn't it? Yeah. So. It is. To, be, to enter the world of becoming. It also said it was under well, the shade. Um, um, Athens. Mm. Is the academy then there were walls. No. Mm. And then down to the Piraeus. Mm. Uh, and that, of course, that reminds us, does it not, of Plato's Republic and the whole diagram of the allegory of the cave in the upper world because this would be Athens and the Acropolis high up mm -hmm. the center of the divine of the gods right great center but uh, so he went directly see he went directly there and so the question we were raising is, what is the significance of someone saying they went outside the walls, that these walls are to protect the citizens of Athens? In, in, in Phaedrus, I was, I was a little disturbed by Phaedrus and how Socrates was outside the wall and, and, um, and, and talking to Phaedrus. Phaedrus was um, remarking that Socrates was like so outside of his element. Uh, with the trees and outside in nature. And Socrates was saying, I need to get back, you know, this is this is not my element, you know, I feel lost out here essentially. I need to get back in where there's knowledge, where I can be with people and communicate and talk. That's right. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> that disturbed me because it, it, at that moment I thought, I'm disappointed because I, I, I thought that Socrates would connect to the wisdom that is out in nature as well. Yeah, I mean, the idea of nature, as we have it today, is a far cry from what they mean by nature. Nature is, uh, you run risks in nature, not in the 
not in our age because we kill anything that in any way will harm us. We pacify it by destroying all life. Mm -hmm. It was interesting because in one of the references to the last... Just the last, just one, one thought, is that in the Phaedrus he also mentions that nature, the dread of nature, nature like the jungle is the realm of necessity, no law, we would call the jungle. Their idea of nature is our modern use of the word jungle. No doubt. But, okay, let's assume something for the moment, all right? Just for the moment. Let's say we did all this work, okay? It's over. And we see, let us assume there is some parallel. All right, let us say there is some, just for the moment. Um, What is Plato doing? If he's, dis- if he's writing a dialogue and using the structure such as we're looking at as the context within which to play a dialogue. Let me put it another way. Um, we're going to assume for the moment that there is something analogous, sorry? Something analogous. Whether we've done a good job seeing it or not is another issue, okay? So let us assume there is something significant analogous to this. Right, analogically, shall we? Would you agree we see this in many dialogues that he does this? The Republic, the Phaedrus, Phaedo, Symposium. Is it not curious that the physical circumstances, the geography, the history of the day, can be put to such analogical purposes? Is it action? Or, or like, is it find that curious or not? Am I just uh, not curious? They even have gods that have names that fit the dialogues. I mean, the names of the gods, mythology, all seems to be able to come together. So let me address the questions just to someone who has got a lot of experience answering questions. Would that be fair? Wouldn't it? If you know yeah, okay, like taking my <laughs> taking suggestions from our guests. Uh, Barbara? <laughs> well... <laughs> Good beginning. Yeah, I, I think it was designed, you know, artistically designed, and perhaps not only to suggest a level of profundity... Okay, I agree. Okay, design. Okay. Okay, okay yeah, design. By the way... Is it rather curious that it can be put to such purposes? It means there must be a structural similarity between the two. Yeah. 
And so you, what's your thinking? What, what? If there's a structural similarity, what does that mean? But it's accidental. <laughs> okay, try it this way, okay? Yeah. No, I see, I was trying to give you the question. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what difference would it make if, this, if everything is the same as it is, except the setting, and instead it's in Brooklyn? <clears throat> Or downtown Huntington Beach. Yeah, okay. <laughs> then there are certain things you could or could not do. Mm, absolutely. And here you can do many things? Mm -hmm. Outside the wall. It's well, the whole, the whole dynamic of the, the whole um, dramatic setting, right? <laughs> the whole dramatic setting mm -hmm. allows an analogical reference on this level of exploration. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think this would be a good time to call on Igmar? <laughs> I do, boy. Because I see his hand moving out there. Oh, that would be ex that makes it excellent. Jump in. It's the entire culture. Pardon? The whole culture allows for this type of play. I don't know the word. Okay, I'll write it down. Culture. <laughs> um, Hellenic, I think you called it. Or we called it. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, like the idea that... I have a problem with that word, like so... the idea that they see that they're all their various temples to the gods and goddesses are part of a magical landscape. Their pantheism has it that there's spirits all over the place, as we find in Hesiod. Right? That divinity is omnipresent. Right? So, the symbology of their gods and goddesses playing the roles that they play allow them allow for them to see the divine in their daily lives in every single natural experience that they have a god or goddess associated with, including love, the sun. Well, Barbara, did you find that helpful? Uh, not particularly. Well, you gotta well, I urge him to go deeper. Yeah. <laughs> well, um... Deep enough. I suppose... She'll do it. Go ahead. Well, I mean, um... Like, I guess um, to say that it permeates the culture, or that being a part of the culture, Plato. Can because that's what this is, this is. That's what this shows. Right. Doesn't it? take all that together. Right. Could you read up here? What do I have here? Yeah. Could you read it for us? Is it not curious? that the physical circumstances, the geography, the history of the day can be put to such analogical usage. And you were quite right in saying, roll it all up together and use the word culture. But doesn't that therefore help us? It simplifies it. It's not curious that the culture is such that it can be used to such analogical purposes. And what do you think of that? Let's assume you're right. I think it's astonishing. What, what? I think they were able to live, probably live happier lives than we do. What do you think of his answer? Well, he said it was astonishing. I like that part. Better. I did too. Yeah. Why don't you ask him what he means? What, what do you mean by that? Yeah, what well, you, you think Julie you asks, see, what do you mean you by you being life. so astonishing? Sure. You see your daily life is filled with spirits and magical events. It's like living in Wonderland or something, you know? Mm -hmm. List out. Dionysius is present in every aspect of nature. Well, let, me, let me raise a question. Yeah, you have right? a divine celebration, okay. you know, mystical celebration. Mm -hmm. There are two possibilities. One possibility clearly could be, which is more likely, that Plato saw these possibilities and constructed a dialogue to meet this cultural pattern. He exploited the culture to give it such a context. Because it's obvious that it could not have been done, and he wasn't trying to capture an existing dialogue that took place Historically, with Socrates at this school. Hmm. And that's the simpler explanation. So I think it's only fair that Barbara objects. 
Well, I thought that there are there is some evidence. At least I'm not sure about this dialogue, but for the symposium, for example, that there was a dialogue in Xenophon, right? That yeah. that he that there was there were historical dialogues that mm -hmm. resembled, at some points of contact, the artistic works of Plato, right? But they were not so like Xenophon would be a good counterexample in a way, wouldn't? <laughs> Okay, look her. I'm glad you. I'm glad you took issue with it. Therefore, what might it mean, Barbara? Well, that some people can, some people are participant in an underlying uh, paradigm that has the both the divine and uh, participation in the in the divine, and some people are not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me do that again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> Just That's because Xenophon is a great counterexample to Plato. No, 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 no. Jump in. Might, might I, I um, share a, an insight that Barbara shared with us? Oh, good. I'm for it. <laughs> which, when she was at the last, had you know, her personal insight, where she actually saw the young men, and you know, was that, you know, how... Out, you know? Yeah. Well, might I say that, like the Dream Master, could Plato have yes. set these scenes so someone could actually, you know, see them in their mind more clearly, using that that context of the mind being symbolically stimulated more than with the intellectual aspects of it to be um, like the Dream Master giving a more vivid idea with these details of the actual ideas? Well, I mean, I, I did offer that. and um, How would you restate it? But uh, Well, I, I compared it to the time when I did a, a Tibetan visualization, you know, and, and in that visualization, I was a, I <clears throat> entered into it in a certain way where if you've ever done anything like that, you have a, you build, uh, they have you um, see a Buddha of a certain color, wearing a certain robe, carrying a certain bowl, with a, uh, on this, mm -hmm. on this chakra, they, with a, they set another Buddha of another color with another bowl and with this, you know, robe and yada yada, mm -hmm. and pretty soon you're up like five Buddhas high, mm -hmm. you know, and when I was up that high in the visualization, I looked down. And I could see all the way down to the ground, all the little <laughs> layers. And it was like it had a reality beyond imagination. You know? Mm -hmm. It was like a, a bardo mm -hmm. of some sort. So when I was doing this uh, visualization, all of a sudden it was like entering into a realm where the colors were much more brilliant than daily life. And there, it was peopled by the characters of the dialogue, which is what Lyndon's referring to. And so uh, that's why I raised the question to you when we talked about it. Like, do these dialogues in some way exist as, in, in a similar way to those visualizations of the Tibetans that you can enter into them and mm -hmm. um, maybe use them mnemonically? I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, I, I went right out of it again. I didn't stay there for a long time or anything. Mm -hmm. But um, I, being a completely unchemically enhanced, it was, you know, pretty... Right. Good. But I don't know that that answers the question. Well, yeah. that's why so, Julie you're raised call your hand. hand. Good idea. I just thought it would be important to also to wonder about this gate of all seeing. It doesn't sound like a distraction or a, or a diversion from his path if you're going through the gate of all seeing. And when Linda mentioned the Dream Master and Bar the way Barbara was talking about it, it was as if this journey was interrupted by a dream, which was analogous to the situation going on. So, <coughs> okay. so I don't know. I mean, you know, look. Let me turn you around and say, let us assume, therefore, that this is the uh, philosophical, metaphysical. Setting. And all of the, the whole culture of the time, mm -hmm. the input of the Greek mythology, everything. Right? This is the stage. This is the stage. Right? 
fabulous historical stage and in dropped the birth of Socrates mm. to play out the implications mm. of a whole culture mm. that had everything in place as a stage to be utilized for such purposes. If that's the case then, uh, as Daniel would say, uh, <laughs> There might be a parallel in today in Huntington Beach. Someone <laughs> might. But All the comes, world's a stage. I don't know. Well, that doesn't shouldn't stop you from speculating. <laughs> Should it? Yes. Uh, well, that's yeah. interesting. Oh. Then, oh. then isn't it like? Is there a, is there a certain set of dialogue that goes on inside Athens? that yes. is not permitted outside Athens? Is this two different places? Because everything about this is cutting, cutting away from something and going see, yeah, to the next see, thing. This is quite similar to the Republic, you see, because yeah. in the Republic he's pulled away. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. He wants to go back. Right. He wants to go back to Athens. He wants to get into that again. And he's been captured to stay here, and therefore he has to go through the whole Republic as it were to be free to return. Mm. Same thing here. Mm. Well, hmm. Jump in. Yeah, please. I just want to stick on that particular point. So yeah, yeah. Like where are you? The point that you just made that this is like the Republic. Like, if I'm reading at the bottom of seven, and. Excuse me, could you yeah. give us the page reference and get page everyone? Page seven. Read? Which one? Page seven. First page of the document. Seven? Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Jump in. So. Hippocles is asking Socrates, from the academy, on my way straight to the Lyceum is the answer. Come over here, he said, straight to us. So first of all, he's being commanded, right? Come over here, straight to us. You will not put in here, but you may as well. Like in, Okay, I'm just going to keep reading for a second. Um, where do you mean? I asked, and what is your company? And th this is where it gets strange, right? He says, here, he said, showing me there, just opposite the wall, a sort of enclosure, and a door standing open. And we have no idea what's on the other side of the door. As part of this enclosure, you know, it, it's semi-threatening, right? Come over here. There's this door standing open. And then Socrates follows up and he says, what prey is this place and what your pastime? Hey, what kind of joint is this place? And what do you do there, right? I mean, am I going to get jumped when I walk, in, walk inside? Yeah. I mean, he didn't know it existed. It's recent construction. No, yeah. yeah. it's a new construction. And but normally he doesn't walk that way. Right. I mean, Socrates presumably is already old at this point. Yeah. He already has half And they're outside the walls of Athens. They're outside of the perimeter of Athens. I'm sorry, I'm not following your point. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But what would follow if this is the ideal setting? Justice is at stake. And right. drop in within a hundred years, all of the greats submerged. Mm, golden age. Right? All the tragedians, all the historians, all the philosophers, within a hundred years. Bang! And would it also be right to say that... That would be quite a remarkable stage presentation, would it not? Yeah. Beautiful. Plato, Plato's competing with the poets here, too. David, jump in. Yeah. Um, I kind of got the surfboard image. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> you get a big glob of uh, plant resin, yeah. and you drop one little drop of this stuff called catalyst into yeah. it, and it sends a shock wave through that that turns it into something pure plastic. You know, it's like pew. Now. That's the dialogue you were just having with Barbara right now about how Socrates moving into this matrix yeah. and bringing, bringing it, 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 and then she's trying to say, well, here's Huntington Beach, it's all that, you know. Is it, is it the matrix is always there and at any point you drop it in? Because this is a, you know, if you've got... If you could trace, you know, Olympic heroes and meetings with Hercules and, you know, if that's what's behind that door, yeah. you know, if that's what's behind that door and, and that's what they're, they're talking about in there, you know, and youth and love and praise and all that stuff. 
and you drop a, a Socrates in there, and all of a sudden it becomes right. boom, this, this way of see, uh, metaphysical seeing that mm -hmm. can't ever be done again. Or mm -hmm. is that matrix always there? Yeah. Find a way to, to, you know, I teach mythology and Hercules and all that stuff. Uh, and, and the only way I can create a milieu in which you can do the kind of thinking he is is first to spend three years developing a cultural awareness of that, that way of seeing. And then you can drop that catalyst in and you get a couple of people light up. But there's no way to do it in this culture. Yeah. It's not a solitary figure. It's a whole exploration of a culture that comes together and personified in one person who profoundly alters the entire age by taking... But you see, what's curious about it is that there are two dudes at work. There's a Socrates and there's a Plato who writes it. Yeah. That very well? Mm -hmm. Even spells well in Greek, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was easy. That's, that's, I won't say anything about my spelling. I mean, wouldn't it be right to say that? Like, Pardon me, do it again. He's standing on the back of giants, to borrow a, a metaphor, right? Like, he's got Homer on the yeah. yeah. I mean, And the age the itself image. was a giant. Mm -hmm. Was that? And they were giants that he therefore stood, right, stood upon and created. Yeah. And Remarkable and period of... Pythagoras, Parmenides. History, isn't it? Kind of curious, isn't it? Just to go back to the question. The tragedians, too, that's right. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I mean, another thing that's kind of interesting is that um, this thing that Barbara mentioned about the right under the wall, the, uh -huh. the parapetos, is that you have Plato writing, and um, you know, Aristotle is the sort of preeminent peripatetic, and you have these kind of... In the Lycian. Right. Barbarians at the gate, and they're they're sort of almost as the uh, culture is preparing to get hit with this new construction, there's also uh, right at the footsteps of where Aristotle makes his march, you have these sophists uh, assembling and learning uh, weaponry and everything else. Oh, but see, if, uh, if we play that level, then this would be the Lycian, identified with Aristotle, mm. with Plato, and the sophists in between. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be saying something interesting mm -hmm. about Plato, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that? Right. It's putting Aristotle in a certain place. In the cave. No, <laughs> no. Lewis. And sophists outside of the wall, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to construct something new mm -hmm. with a very low level of dialogue, mm -hmm. a poor understanding of dialectic. And see, this goes back to that one thing Barbara was mentioning. Behind this all, if such a thing can be set out as the idea of likeness. Since that plays a role within it, both linguistically and in the dialogue itself. Well, I just thought we'd just kick around a so few Pierre, ideas tonight. How could we bring about a complete cultural revival of this model? Because, I mean, it seems pretty fun to look at the world in this way. Like, it, like, like you could sell it in some sense, right? Like, well, therefore, what does it take for us, then, to tap what's there? What obligation does this have upon us if we want to get into it and understand it? Exactly. We're all, I would say, obligated to become Socratic. Like, become uh. that dynamic. <laughs> Especially everyone in here. Well, that's why we're very lucky to have some young people yeah. around here who can do it. I can't wait. Right? Yeah. No. <laughs> What uh, significance do you think the Festival of Hermes plays? Talk to it again. The Festival of Hermes, the fact that this is going on That's true. on the day of the Festival of Hermes, and it's a spring of Hermes. That's right. And Hermes is apparently, according to what I read, sacred, uh, a wrestling is sacred to Hermes. Yeah. So there might be like two gods, yeah. two parallels, yeah. wrestling versus dialectic, perhaps. And Hermes. And and built in is the parallel. No. Of course, that's 
But Plato, he loves the parallel. He yeah. loves the analogy. Yeah. Okay, who's going to answer that? Yeah. See, again, to make those points, the culture already has to have it in place for him to utilize it and to express it and personify it, which again is quite remarkable. I will say, though, that I think even if this dialogue happened, I doubt if it happened on that day. I mean, that, that seems like a bit of artifice, you know, on his part. Wow. Well, you know, that would happen on that day. It works out so well. I mean, you could stage it perhaps. Maybe, maybe there was a wall. Maybe there was a place like that. But that for it on that day, it seems like, yeah, I know, it just seems like... Yeah, a little too much going well, on. Like on that day is, is central to the Phaedo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. on that day the ship was... Yes. Uh, but that's why, that's why to some degree does it matter whether it was possible for it to be literally true when, when we can see how it functions at, at, as a dream. I mean, it functions, it functions as a, I'm not an analogy. I'm not saying it's wrong. Yeah. I, yeah. He, he's, yeah. he's doing so many things that he... I think, as Pierre says, because he has that opportunity to do it, he's going to do it. But but if awesome. but if the spring is there and that's sacred to Hermes, and if wrestling is sacred to Hermes, then why not have it on the festival day? And then the young man is pulled away to participate in the rites. That reminds me of the, of the uh, Republic as well, where people come and go. Yeah. What's the shuffle of sleeves at the right time? Right, right. right. Yeah. I'd like to hear an answer to the question about what, what's the significance of the, it taking place on the Hermia and the reference to Hermes, all of those. If anybody can answer. Go, go ahead. How about you? No, come on. Here. Good heavens, don't call upon someone who's sitting here with chalk in his hands. Well, come on, give it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just happen to be a worker here. Come on. Well, come on, what do you think? Come on, try it. Well, it was already mentioned that Hermes is a messenger god. That's true. All seeing. Right. Among all seeing. All seeing. Yes. Is that a name for Hermes? Yes. Okay. And he, therefore, ferries messages from, by reading, yeah, it is correct. Ferries messages from the gods to men like love functions in the symposium. That's one thing. The other thing is he's an usherer of souls into the house of Hades when they die. Right? So he's a particular god that's arranged over... It's yeah. messenger. It's a messenger All about between messages. men and the gods. Right. Yeah. But, but an usherer of souls as well. Yeah. He presides over the processes of dying and death. Here, uh, a footnote Which about... Which goes with Lucy. Just, just, are you finished? Well, that, that also dovetails with the idea of an emancipation, okay. like Lysis, uh, emancipating from the physical. One, Lysis, Just London. a quick comment. Hermes also is, the, is clever, okay? And on the dark horse side, he is the god of thieves, pickpockets, and liars. Okay? In tradition. These pickpockets and liars. And liars, mm -hmm. yes, because of his cleverness, his dark side, which like also aligns him with the sophists. Sure. Like the sophist sure. yeah. Sure. sure. Jump well, well, stepping back a little and looking at from a little bit of a distance, uh, we've all played around with this for a while, and... Um, We've all pretty much, I know that we've all come to sort of the conclusion that mythology is just a stage. It's kind of a stage on which these crazy part of the world worked out the, the dynamics of the mind. Yeah. That's what mythology was for. And somebody was watching the nature of the mind while they were making up this mythology. We already got that. And, yeah. and the more sophisticated they got, the, you know, and Proclus eventually <coughs> boiled it down to its essence. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it was a drama of the mind already in that world. Right. And all those gods were already there playing roles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like if I, had, if I was Shakespeare and I had all Ovid and all these great histories and things, I could make pick and choose various plays. He didn't have all that, but he did have the whole drama of the mind yeah. already established 
and know, could see it, and 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 that culture happened for some reason, and they all could see it. They all could see it. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, they could use it and share it. That's quite a remarkable period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what Hermes was about. Is the expression of that. It's probably why he dropped it in at that particular yeah. point. Another reason why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chris? But the kind of parallel that jumped out at me was that I noticed the language too as Socrates was diverted, sort of forced, and it seemed almost wrestled into the yeah. wrestling academy. <laughs> That's good. And then once he was in there, it was a, a thing about, the question was, what should, a, what kind of things should a lover say to their beloved? Mm -hmm. You know, both both to them and when they're not there. So what are the correct things to say while what was going on was what was the correct way to like physically engage an opponent. So that was what they were doing inside there. But the question was on a higher level about what was the correct word, in other words, what was the correct dialogue to engage in. And that's what Socrates was engaged in. So he, he moved right away to a higher level, it yeah. seemed to me. But they were doing the physical level. Yeah. Yeah. He introduced that one idea, right, with the, with the, the great addition, which is it's enough to talk about the relationship between a, a lover and beloved or beloved, and to find out what dynamics take place under various conditions. But the real question is, if they want to be a friend to one another, where is that friendship and what is its origin and where does it go? He added that higher point, and that changed the entire dialogue. And with that amazing insight, which uh, the good is a friend. Mm. And therefore, when people are friends to one another, what it is it that for the sake of which they are friends, but the good. And, and in that sense, he seemed to be like grappling with them. Yeah. Again, that wrestling to, thing. Yeah. To yeah. try and... Bring them up. Yeah, bring them up. Yeah. So it, it seemed like a struggle, too. Yeah. That, you know... So he's gonna he's gonna struggle with them, fight with them to raise a banner of friendship. Yeah. I think that's strange. Would you agree we're in a good place therefore to get into the Phaedrus next week? Woo hoo! Okay. Right? Wait, wait, wait. I, I, oh this look like at the hand was, goes up as quick as it went down. This, Go ahead. this idea of fighting. Like Pardon? do we have to do we have to analyze the dialogue? And every instance of Socrates did it in some way as pugnacious, that he's uh, going to mix it up somehow. Like, like, I find it interesting that when he asked the question, how does one friend, how does a person become a friend of another, mm -hmm. he doesn't just let them answer. Well done, he instantly it. starts like characterizing the type of answer that he's looking for. Well, you know, is it a lover that becomes friend of the one that's loved? Or the one that's loved and becomes friend of the lover. He insists upon his own framework, is what I'm saying, right? And that, that seems tyrannical in a certain way, right? Yes, like, what if it turns out that that's a dialogue that has the model of being a friend? Yeah. <laughs> then, then, there's a, right. then there's a way of fighting that's uh, friendly. Okay, what do you say? Get a cup of coffee and sit around and do nothing but talk? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Phaedrus, hold it. Chris has got something. Look, look at his hand up in there. Look. <laughs> Come on. Could you repeat that last, those last words you said about the dialogue? My memory is very bad. Uh, uh, let me see. You can recall it for me. No, my memory is bad. My memory is bad. Um, the dialogue had a model for, uh, yeah yeah that's right I recall yeah and that means go ahead. I didn't know what that meant pardon I didn't know what that meant because the comment was, it was it kind of shook me I didn't know how to understand well is that is that the way he was functioning there um, in the dialogue I didn't read the dialogue yet, so I, I, didn't, I don't know if that's... I, so the way I heard is that he was defining... He was asking a question and defining how he wanted that question answered. Which means he was teaching them how to answer a question. 
And how will not just letting them say whatever is going to come, makes come out of their mouth. But remember, Barbara was going to offer a six pack, and the you know, Nordic Society was going to chip in for the yeah. money for anyone who yeah. finished all that finished work that we asked to people. To, uh, who did it? Finished it? Nubuya, did you do it? Nubuya? No. No? That's why we might as well move on and do the Phaedra song. Otherwise, we can take another week. Okay, see you guys. Thank you. I just want to make sure you saw this email that I forwarded and sent to you.